Welcome to this Christmas Eve service at Pioneer United Methodist Church. I'm the Reverend Julie Reinholtz, and this is the Reverend Lee Gibbons. May the light of Christ shine on you this night. At this time, we welcome Winnie and Jim Graham to open us in our call to worship and the lighting of our Advent candles. Advent is the time to proclaim the joy Lord to, to the, the world, world. The, the Lord, Lord is come. come. We proclaim a hope that is stronger than any trial. Joy, joy to, to the, the world, world. The, the Lord, Lord is come. come. We proclaim a peace that is stronger than any conflict. Joy, joy to, to the, the world. world. The Lord has come. We, we proclaim a joy that our waiting was not in vain. Joy, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Tonight we light all the candles. The first candle reminds us that Advent is a time to wait upon the Lord with faithful anticipation. The second candle reminds us that Advent is a time to prepare for the Lord in heart, soul, and mind. The third candle reminds us that the Lord is generous. The fourth candle reminds us that the one we wait for, prepare for, is generous is Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Tonight we light the last candle, the Christ candle. This candle reminds us to proclaim the arrival of our hope, our light, our Savior. As the light from each candle fills this room, so may the light of Christ, the promise of God, fill our world. Christmas arrive in Afghanistan or Ethiopia or El Salvador? When will Syria live in peace? When will Palestine and Israel share justice? When will COVID no longer ravage the world? When will Washington, Westminster, and Brussels declare no more hunger, no more war? When will governments turn their weapons into plowshares? And when will multinationals turn their profits into pruning hooks? When will Christmas arrive? Please join me in an attitude of prayer. O newborn Savior, this dark night, 
on the eve of your birth, when there is still time to believe that because you will be coming, the world will change. In our Merry Christmas, make we, may we make peace. In our season's greetings, may we share a welcome. In our Feliz Navidad, may we sow seeds of justice. And may we believe, not in some magic, but in a vision, a hope that isn't a dream, but a way of life, not for someone else, but for all this night, knowing that you are on your way. So be it. Please join me now in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. friends, and a blessed Christmas Eve to you. I was just reading the lyrics of the song that we just heard. Um, it's a song called O oh Holy Night. And we've actually taken um, the name of our sermon series from one of the lines in this song. Here's how it goes. It goes, O oh Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. I think that's such a beautiful song, and I love that we've been talking about hope this, this Advent season. It reminded me of a legend from long ago. 150 years ago, the armies of Germany and France were fighting one another in the Franco-Prussian War. It was a terrible war, neighbor fighting neighbor. The armies of France and the armies of Germany were on the battlefield, hurting one another and dying. Their battle raged on through Christmas Eve and that night, one of the soldiers laid down his weapon and stepped forward. He was from France, and so he sang a song that was really important to him. It was called Cantique de Noël. It's the song that eventually became O Holy Night in English. He went up into the battlefield 
and he sang that song out into the dark night over the sound of weapons being fired. A soldier from Germany came forward too. He laid down his gun, he stood up, and he started to sing one of his favorite Christmas carols. Legend has it that all the soldiers on both sides laid down their weapons and gave each other a day of peace as they celebrated Christmas. It's too bad that they picked those weapons up again. I'm sorry that the war didn't end then and there. But I love this story because it tells us that even in the midst of that darkness, Christ's light shone, even if it was just for one day. At Christmas time, hope is born again. And we hope for the day when all wars are over and everyone can live together in peace. We hope for the day when Christ's light burns brightly in every heart and illuminates the whole world forevermore. I hope that you have had a hopeful Advent and that Christmas brings you and your family great hope. Can't wait to talk to you again soon as we continue to tell the story of Jesus' arrival.
Our scripture reading tonight comes from Luke 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see Deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in my dark street shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in. is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, may angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars to there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, 
the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye whose angry ancient story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the new. had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. We have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Love came down at Christmas Love lovely Christmas, star 
Advent, the season of waiting, is meant to be, stoke the flames of hope in our hearts once again. This Advent, we have anticipated hope. We have heard about the way of hope. We have discovered the generosity of hope. We have heard and learned again about the promise of hope. And this night, this night, we celebrate the arrival of hope. No matter what is going on externally or internally, we need to fix our hearts on the incredible gift of Jesus. When we do this, we will experience the life-sustaining, life-giving thrill of hope. Hope, by our English definition, is a feeling of favorable and confident expectations, not wishful thinking. As I shared with the children a couple of weeks ago, hope in the Hebrew language means to bind together, something one can grasp, like a cord. Hope is something that is real enough to cling to. Hope is not something out of our reach. Hope is waiting with the assurance that what one is waiting for will one day come true. The people of Israel were clinging to the promises of God. They had been waiting for generations. They had waited since the time of I that Isaiah had spoken of the one who would come as the Prince of Peace. We, as a people of privilege living in the 21st century, do not have the tenacity or the lived experience of waiting for 400 years. Generation after generation waited for the arrival of hope. The birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of hope, the arrival of hope for the Israelites. And yet, here we are, 2,000 years later, we are both celebrating and still trying to wait. We look back and celebrate the birth and wait in hope for Jesus' second coming. Even though we celebrate, life is still hard. We struggle with relational wounds, diseases, family strife, financial hardships, depression, addiction, and abuse. This particular year, 2020, we are in a deep pandemic, isolated from loved ones dwelling in political chaos. We find ourselves asking the same question that God's people so long ago asked. Will God fulfill God's promises? Can we still have hope? Can we cling to the hope? Can we let go of ourselves and take firm hold of the rope, the hope that God offers? As we listen to our scripture this evening, the Christmas story reads like a children's story. That is until we pause and listen closely. It is then that the elements of the story begin to stick out for their unusual quality, their rough surface and the seedy underbelly. A young woman hmm, gets knocked up before she's married. That's a situation punishable by death in her day. At the very least, she could be shunned. Her fiancé, Joseph, doesn't seem to have it much better. He, too, could be disgraced. The whole family could be disgraced. This young woman, Mary, unsure of what the angel says, and yet despite recognizing what is happening, she will break all social and religious mores by responding with absolute calm and confidence. Can we just take a moment here to acknowledge how frightening it would be to be visited by an angel and given news that absolutely turns your life upside down? The world Jesus was born into was a mess. That oh holy night that stable bathed in blackness of the dark of night, it was at a time in history when the world was in a terrible, political, war-torn disarray. Sound familiar? The Jewish temple had been destroyed, the people of God had been trampled and oppressed, and their hopes squashed. 
Jesus was only days old when Mary and Joseph were warned that he was already being sought out to be killed. And let's not forget, their journey to Bethlehem was to fill out paperwork to stay and stand in lines to be counted by the government. With all that being said, this is just the kind of place where hope is born in the darkness of social and political upheaval, in the chaos of change, in the depths of despair. This is how our God works. God seeks after us just as God has always done. And God is creative enough to know how to really get to us. This time, God put on skin. God poured out God's self into Jesus and sent him, to, sent him to be born into a world that would eventually hate him. And when the birth becomes real, oh, those angels sing and the shepherds whoop it up. Wouldn't it just be wonderful if we were able to gather together this night and sing hopeful, joyful songs especially this Christmas Eve, 2020. Wouldn't it be lovely for each of us to come from our own dark places, our own depths, where even we have seen a, a small sliver of hope. For hope is seen in the spunkiness of a loved one recovering from COVID. Hope is seen for the person in recovery and not drinking today. Hope is seen through the evidence of living even after your most dear one has died. Hope is lived out in forgiveness offered when it wasn't deserved. Hope is alive and well in the midst of your divorce, your addiction, your struggling marriage, your bad grades, your directionless, directionless life, your loneliness. Jesus is born into the mess of our lives. God became incarnate because God is love. God becomes, it comes into the darkness of our hearts because God loves us. Not because God is angry, but simply because God loves. Jesus is born into a world that rejects him, into a skeptical world Jesus is born to fulfill the promises of God. On Christmas Eve, we celebrate God's faithfulness and goodness. We are reminded that God will always come through on God's promises. It is the most hopeful story there is. It is a life-giving thrill of hope. And my friends, it is our hope. Hope will arrive again this night. May it be so. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy
friends, after the benediction, we invite you to safely dim the lights of your house and take the candles that you were given during the drive through They're turned on by turning the top. Light your candles and join us in our tradition of singing Silent Night. Now hear this benediction. Go in wonder. Go to bring light to those who sit in the darkness, joy to those who have tasted bitter tears, and magic to a world bereft of hope. Go with the songs of the angels in your ears and the love of God in your hearts. Go and spread the word that Christ the Lord is born again this night. Amen.